Okay, thank you. For group two, we have a discuss about the varieties of the food. According to the color, first we get a banana, yellow, 
color and the benefit rich in potassium yeah and the second squash yeah it's the banana thank you ma'am we will eat later on squash color uh, orange and we'll get a fit vitamin a for for eyes wow complete and the uh, third tomato tomato oh Tomato is color violet and vitamins, oh sorry, red and benefit for lycopene like for the heart, yeah? And grapes, grapes, ma'am. So grapes, I have one. Oh, <laughs> the color grapes. Violet for the vitamin C and fifth green vegetables. First, yeah. <laughs> Green vegetables for our body, and the last one is barley grass, green also for the oxygen, and all of these things on your Bible. You can read there, <laughs> yeah, the Bible reference in the so you can see. But uh, I will give in Genesis one twenty nine, in Daniel, you see Daniel, or oh, eat all the fruits. So, the example. <laughs> and also, 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Whatever you eat, you drink, included this one. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so um, our color yellow is representing emotions and um, we have to write down positive and negative emotions. So the first um, uh, positive emotion is joy. When Joseph and Mary um, had heard the conception. conception of baby Jesus and then excitement when the Israelites crossed the Red Sea, they started to sing and empathy when Jesus identified with the family of Lazarus. Love when Jesus sent his only begotten son to die for us. God sent his only begotten son. And then um, negative emotions. We have guilt when Peter denied Jesus three times. Anger when Moses beat the rock in the wilderness. Um, jealousy between Cain and Abel. Shame. Um, Adam, Adam and Eve when they committed the first sin. So the um, conclusion of all of this is that human tendencies have both emotions, but it is up to us to choose emotion. Um, emotions guide behavior. It's important to control our emotions. A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we have a couple of questions that we discussed and we had a very fruitful discussion. The first discussion question that we have uh, was discuss the beauty and variety of colors in nature and how our lives are enhanced by this gift of God. We truly believe that uh, color and beauty are gifts from God. and. Um, Perhaps 
the most prevalent color if you look around you know just i want you to look outside the window what uh, what what color uh, that you see is uh, uh, we, we often see uh, predominant is green yes uh, i also see dr green there who's wearing a red shirt <laughs> Um, and Mr. Green, but uh, <coughs> yes, uh, green is a beautiful color, though not any of my favorites. Uh, in India, if you paint a house green, it will be stoned the next day. <coughs> in Pakistan, green is a favorite color. <laughs> um, <coughs> but, you know, it is said that green soothes your eyes and uh, it has a very soothing and calming effect. Um, it is advised that people who want to calm down, uh, people who are, uh, you know, very tensed and uh, very excited and perhaps uh, emotionally perturbed, someone like me, most of the time, uh, they, they are advised to go out and look at green. The beauty of green, it has a calming effect. And, uh, you know, um, one verse in the Bible uh, mentions uh, the color green. Can you, do you remember which? Verse of the Bible? Psalms 23. Psalms 23, yes. That comes to our mind. Yeah. And uh, we have drawn this, di uh, this, uh, this picture. I want to use your imagination, you know. Uh, this is a goat, <laughs> not a sheep. <laughs> um, yes, not yet mutton. <laughs> uh, the sheep is white, you know, but it eats green grass. <laughs> and then we have uh, the beautiful green tree, uh, water, water also um, looks kind of green, much of the water looks green, in India at least. <laughs> and um, uh, we have a lot of beautiful uh, grass, this is grass, okay. We were not very good in uh, our uh, sketching, but uh, yes. And then this is the sun. And uh, the white clouds, gray clouds, the gray mountains in the background. Um, and then, you know, the fruits, uh, the beautiful fruits. Uh, where are they, Dr. Framer? Um, perhaps you can find all colors in the, in the fruits, you know. Beautiful orange. The minute you look at it, uh, your mouth starts watering beautiful red uh, tomatoes and uh, the yellow banana they, you know these are just examples of uh, the colors that you find in the nature if you look uh, you can't see the sky but the sky is usually blue and beautiful blue one of my favorite colors but uh, can uh, can you guess what is my favorite color brown i like brown i like brown somehow i like uh, that's why i'm wearing a brown shirt and uh, i like this wood color wood is i like the color of the wood especially the bark of the tree beautiful and um, and uh, yes uh, god has given us all of these colors for us to appreciate and enjoy and you know there are some colors that we human beings don't see you know that but those colors are nevertheless there there are some spectrum of the uh, electromagnetic uh, uh, range uh, which we do not see but god has given us colors
Hello. There it is. All right. Um, I don't have our our sheet of paper with the instructions, but basically we're we're talk, supposed to be talking about knowledge and different levels of knowledge, and then the different areas of knowledge. And we listed a whole bunch of them, 10 or 12 different areas, math, science, humanities, arts and sciences, and all of that sort of thing. And then we were supposed to talk about the levels of knowledge. Well, there are various ways to categorize it, and we thought about the beginning of knowledge, which is le the knowledge that we recognize something all the way down to make creating something new as knowledge, um, and evaluating, making judgments. And so, we thought about a text, and I don't see the text there, but it said, no, there it is, uh, Proverbs 9.10. And most of you are very familiar with that. Yes, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Wisdom and knowledge go together. And the word fear, if you tell a child that, uh, you know, you're to fear the Lord, I mean, that's not a good thing ordinarily in our language. So it really means the reverence, the awe. And if we put that first, that's the beginning of all of this. We put it, if we have the right priorities, look at all the different things that flow from that. We're able to take plane rides. We ride in a car down this hill. Uh, we, we have food that we can fix <laughs> very nicely. All of these blessings we have, they, if we put God first, they come to us and we can enjoy them better because we even know what is going to help us get to, which is back to God. So that's our representation and it's, what is this, blue or purple? And I don't know. That, oh, okay, so. Knowledge, and it's not only knowledge, it's being able to do something with the knowledge that we're blessed with, so. That's it, thank you very much. What was our, um, okay, um, what are the, the sheet of paper? Sheet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, our group was tasked with uh, identifying various abilities and skills that God has given us. And um, so we tried if you can see, uh, some people have the ability to communicate very well, and some people can really give love, and some people are good in empathizing and forgiving, and some are uh, more, some are sharing, and some are able to cook well, and some are a very good listener and um, worshiping, ability to worship. Okay, and um, the skills to play games well and. Uh, gently communicate, not harshly, and uh, make good friends and uh, loving unconditionally, being good host. I think those are really uh, true skills. Yes. Uh, uh, to diffuse, con some people have the ability to, con to diffuse conflicts. Some can sing well and some can preach well. Um, um, and all of us are gifted uh, with these abilities and skills in some way. And uh, we believe that if we, if we make use of these skills and develop th this in all of us, we will be able to praise God and uh, uh, with what he gifted us with. And, uh, and ultimately, uh, uh, benefiting mankind. Matthew. Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 to 20. 28, the parables of the talents. All of us are gifted in different ways. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Swansea Mashwai was able to communicate so well, better than her husband and daughter also. <laughs> 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 
So we are very happy. We are very happy that she is uh, part of uh, the uh, Indigo. Indigo. Okay. Indigo is a highlighted color here. Thank you. One, two, okay, we had to talk about character and give examples, positive and negative examples, and what kind of character we need to develop, um, and of course what the color means. So we'll talk about that now. The definition of character is the way a person feels, thinks, and acts. This is the only thing we will think. And not your car, not your house. <laughs> but character. And here are some examples of positive and negative character. Uh, able and gain, obedience and disobedience. Joseph and his brothers about uh, forgiveness and hate. We have the example of Jesus and Satan. Humility versus pride. And we discussed that the way to do to develop character is we have to reflect God's character and practice it. And the text. Whatsoever <coughs> things are true, noble, just, pure, and a good report. Of good report. Things on these things. And as far as violet is concerned, we decided violet means, everybody? Royalty. And it is royalty because we are all children of the king. Welcome. <laughs>
a very good morning to each and every one of you. You know, usually I read the lesson study only when I have to teach. <laughs> uh, I was not really preparing to teach this morning, so uh, I did not quite uh, study it in depth. But nevertheless, uh, on a half second notice, uh, Dr. Uh, Pastor uh, Frederick has asked me to summarize. We have a very beautiful lesson study this uh, uh, this uh, this morning, and the title is Divine Wisdom. <laughs> um, wisdom is a fascinating subject, and uh, perhaps divine wisdom is even more. Um, what is wisdom? What is its relationship? to truth. Is wisdom possible in the absence of truth? And is truth possible without wisdom? These are important questions and very intriguing questions and perhaps these need very deep reflection. Um, let us go back to the beginning, the very beginning. The Bible begins with the text, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. He created human beings as the crowning act. And he created human beings with a special ability. The ability to think, discern, plan. The power of choice was given to mankind and with all of these, we say that human beings were created, created with a special ability. And perhaps it wouldn't be very wrong to say that man was created with wisdom. And God intended that man use wisdom to bring honor and glory to him and to preserve the earth to have dominion over whatever God had created. And the very fact that God gave mankind dominion over whatever he had created, uh, he didn't leave man uh, alone with nothing. But he said, well, I would give, it, give wisdom and knowledge and understanding to you. A couple of questions that I would like to raise this morning is, <clears throat> is wisdom truly a gift from God? I would like to have a couple of responses. Or is wisdom something that is, in truth, uh, it, uh, that is, uh, that is uh, cultivated in a person uh, by himself, or is it a God-given gift? Any responses? Yes. Well, maybe taking a cue from Suleiman. Yes. Yes. And he uh, chose wisdom. And he chose wisdom. And before that, he was not as wise. So to me, I think it, 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 it might be cultivated, but it is a gift from God. It might be cultivated, but it's a gift from God. Uh, yes, Dr. Kaikwat. So, uh, I think uh, for a person, I mean, that's my personal opinion, that is, in order to be able to have wisdom, you must have knowledge first. All right. Now, unless you have some information with you. Yes. The knowledge, you cannot build on it or anything. And so that is the time God gives us ability to communicate, uh, uh, reconstruct the knowledge in order to be wise. All right. So you're making a distinction between wisdom and knowledge. Knowledge is knowing, it's information. And what is wisdom, you would say? To be able to uh, use that knowledge well. 
God given ability to be able to use that knowledge to bring honor and glory to his name. I'll come to Dr. Dumistrescu, but uh, I just saw uh, your hand, uh, Madam Rita. Yeah, I was just going to say that wisdom is developed, it, or comes through character development. Wisdom comes through character development. Excellent. Knowledge is knowing. It is awareness of that which is around and how man would interplay with the environment that is around. But knowledge is developing character so that we know what to do with uh, the knowledge that we have. Yes, uh, Dr. Dimitrescu. I will just add that many people may have knowledge, but not everyone has wisdom. How to connect the knowledge, how to make it work? How to make uh, things work. How? So here it is suggested that uh, knowledge is knowing, it's know-how, it is having information about how things may work or how uh, things uh, are related, uh, uh, knowing uh, what causes, uh, what are the causes, what are the effects, what are the antecedents, what are the consequences of things. But knowing how to use it, use this, is what wisdom is. Yes, uh, Dr. Ruge, and so on. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, we, a person may have a lot of knowledge, but not necessarily that you are wise. And the wisdom, as uh, already discussed, and I'm just repeating, I really comes from the Lord. Wisdom really comes from the Lord, the source. Because uh, we may have the knowledge, information. But very often we may not know how to wisely connect that, as Brother Kai would say, connect that for the use of His glory and <coughs> for the benefit of human beings. God may be asked. All right, uh, Mrs. Swanson. Um, uh, from what Dr. Kai and Dr. Kai said, uh, connecting between knowledge and uh, wisdom <coughs> from a very worldly perspective, um, from, a, from a computing and uh, from a worldly perspective, we call it data mining. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, that is uh, draw, drawing uh, drawing uh, intelligence from past <coughs> information or uh, knowledge. And there are techniques and scientific methods to it. Uh, but from a very biblical perspective, we may gain knowledge. But I think to gain wisdom, I think it's only prayer that can help us. <coughs> and so uh, you're also suggesting that the source of wisdom, true wisdom, is really God. Yes. Uh, the question is, what about people who do not believe in God, but they have wisdom? Okay. Mm -hmm. What about that? Whether we may believe in God or not, or whether we may profess that God exists or not, uh, wisdom is a gift that is given to all mankind. Yes, Dr. Greenhands. Yes, yeah, I, I was just reflecting on the text that we read earlier, and that indicates that in wisdom there is a theological question. It really depends on how we define what wisdom is. And so if, if we as Christians define it, we're going to define it differently than other people. And it also means probably for Christians we accept wisdom only from God and only He knows whether we're wise or not because the end is going to be able to tell us whether we please Him or not. And so we have to be a little bit, I guess, uh, humble about how we define it and what we say it is, because it comes first from a reverence for God and putting Him first. Yes. Yes, thank you for this comment. I will, uh, yes, Andrew. Like we Andrew wrote, uh, the knowledge or all the books, they can inform us, they can give us just knowledge, but only Bible can transform us. In the same way, we need to have knowledge. People can use their knowledge in a very smart way. Like lawyers, 
they use their knowledge and they can turn black into white and white into black. But the thing which I think uh, not of wisdom is knowing the will of God and doing the will of God. They know, even the lawyers and many people, they know many knowledges, but they can use it in a very smart way. But yet, wisdom is only, they, their wisdom is not real wisdom. That is a trick, smartness, cleverness. But the real wisdom is knowing the truth, following the truth, which means knowing God's will and doing God. That is the only so wisdom. Wisdom is knowing the will of God. I, I, I think there's a very important dimension that you have added, of course, and, uh, from the scripture. I think what I'm going to say is it's very important. Yes. According to his father. Whether worldly wisdom or divine wisdom, in the course is always the same. Yes. Yes. First Corinthians 12. This is the first. Seven. Eight, it says here, For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit. So, wisdom is a gift from God, and of course it depends how you use it here. Um, progressing, uh, I would like to close on this note. Uh, uh, we have dwelt on uh, wisdom for quite some time. Uh, if we have started the lesson, it leads us uh, from wisdom to truth. What is truth? A uh, very loaded question. When Christ was asked the same question, uh, he was silent. And um, true wisdom must lead us to all truth. Sometimes uh, we are often intrigued. I have uh, often been intrigued by truth. Questions like, can truth be verbalized? Um, can it ever be verbalized? Can, uh, for, w what are, w w what are some of the characteristics of truth? You know, truth, is truth always absolute? Can it be relative? Um, Another question is, uh, uh, for truth, for it to be truth, must it be always complete, uh, always whole? Uh, and you could switch that to say that Jesus always whole, because Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth. I'm the, way the truth, and the life. So Jesus. And uh, perhaps the last dimension or characteristic of truth is, you know, is truth always uh, uh, non-equivocal, you know, something very explicit, very clear. Uh, if something, if it is equivocal, if, uh, 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 is it not truth? Uh, these are some of the questions that we often uh, struggle with. And this often kind of leads me to say that uh, and to uh, to follow Christ you know when Christ was asked he did not articulate truth because maybe truth needs to be understood the minute you articulate articulate it our language is imperfect and can imperfection language articulate something that is absolute but is whole, complete, and perfect. Maybe we have to remain silent. And on this note, remaining silent is not enough. It needs to be understood. Uh, our understanding may not be perfect, but that is how I would like to relate truth with wisdom. It is God who can reveal himself to us. His revelation may not be perfect, may not be complete, because I don't think it's possible for finite mind to grasp the mystery that Christ is, that God is. But nevertheless, we can have enough wisdom, God can give us enough wisdom to live a righteous life and to be worthy in God's kingdom. With this, I would like to close. Thank you very much. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Almighty Father, this morning we wait. 
and we desire and we hope that you would pour your wisdom to all of us so that we may be able to respond to the questions that this world brings the challenges that is life throws at us and the opportunities that our life on this earth brings in jesus name amen, amen. I want to praise the lord for that very profound and meaningful discussion we have a 7 minutes break exactly 7 minutes after which we will all gather here reverently to enter into the divine hour of worship uh, for those of you who feel your sugar is low we have placed some bananas there you may kindly partake of that particularly for those who are above 40 45 you you may kindly avail 7 uh, minutes break exactly 11:20 we will meet here shop we will go ahead with the divine service thank you we appreciate that